This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. This is Session 4, Video Clip 1. The title of this video clip is Theory and Structure of Problem-Based Learning Objects, or PBLOs, Part 1. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number 1. Briefly describe the structure of a problem-based learning object, or a PBLO. Number 2. What is the intent behind PBLOs and what is different about these structures compared to other types of case studies? Number three, how is the information presented on each of the pages of a PBLO supposed to be mutually supportive? In other words, how does it fit together? And question number four, describe what analysis questions are. PBLOs, what are they? Problem-based learning objects, or PBLOs, are small reusable digital media capsules. They satisfy a minimum set of characteristics in order to be qualified as learning objects or objects. The objects are usually formatted using one of a variety of different types of technologies such as Flash, HTML5, or I've had students in the past use presentation applications such as PowerPoint. Essentially, PBLOs consist of, a video, of video case studies which present a context or a situation in which the problem is ill-defined. PBLOs employ a specific four-page structure. Page one consists of a video-based case study clip, usually one and a half to two minutes in length maximum. Secondly, page one also includes transcripts of the video clip so that the audio portion can actually be um, taken a look at in textual format. Number, uh, a, a third component of page one is a brief description of the setting of the video clip. And the last component of page one is a series of four to five analysis questions that invite the viewer to break down the video case into component parts in order to identify embedded problems using inductive processes. Page two consists of contextual information regarding the video clip. In addition, copies of any documentation that are used in the video clip are linked, and links to any websites that are used in the video clip can also be included. Page three describes or includes a brief description of a theoretical lens or a way of looking at the content of the video clips in a theoretical type of way. And page four includes a duplicate of page one, except that four to five analysis questions have been replaced by four to five synthesis questions. These synthesis questions invite the viewer to compile information gleaned from the contextual information, the theoretical lens information, and from conversations with other learners about the video case in order to propose solutions using primarily deductive processes. Several examples of PBLOs can be viewed within the WebCT portion, the additional resources section of this course. A template that can be used in, to assist in PBLO development is also provided in the same location. PBLOs, what are they supposed to do? Problem-based learning objects or PBLOs differ from common characterizations of learning objects because they do not actually contain content that is tied to curriculum outcomes. They are specifically designed to motivate or to initiate a process rather than to deliver actual curriculum content. PBLOs are used to instigate thinking and discussion that is process-centered rather than to provide information about something for assimilation by the users. As such, they are learner-driven as the learners build their own context appropriate solutions to the posed problems. So then looking at each one of the pages in a little bit more detail, I've provided a mock-up uh, for each of the pages as we go through these uh, sequential slides. Page one, the embedded video-based case studies. In a practical vein, the video-based case studies can be set in a number of contexts. One, real context, real in quotes. Uh, in other words, the video case study is compiled from recordings taken in unscripted settings. For instance, I can go into the classroom, the uh, video, uh, the snapshot that you see on the screen at this point in time is taken from classrooms in um, existing uh, settings within um, a high school uh, in the province of Ontario. 
Secondly, we can also use scripted contexts and, and have these acted out by amateur or professional actors. And thirdly, we can have scripted contexts that are depicted by animations or a series of still pictures. Regardless of how they are created, the video-based case studies should depict authentic situations. Authenticity can be determined by the truthfulness of the situation that is depicted. Perhaps another way of stating this idea is to look at how closely the video case matches situations that the video viewers recognize and therefore will be able to identify problems that are embedded within them. Page 2, Contextual Information. Page 2 of a PBLO is designed to provide sufficient contextual information so that those accessing the PBLO can immerse themselves within the situation. I like to think about this using the fly on the wall analogy. Consequently, the intent is to describe the situation presented in the video with lots of detail so that the viewers can feel comfortable and can relate to it. In other words, transferring themselves into the situation. The authenticity argument used earlier in this clip is of value here in that the contextual information given here should add to the authenticity of the context that is depicted in the video. In addition to a description of the setting I have in the past, attached links to websites that provide additional detail to the concept or the setting, or I have attached copies of any documents in Adobe Acrobat.pdf format that may be used by individuals in the video clip itself. If a map or a diagram of physical setting would be of assistance, this might be included as an attached document as well. Finally, page three, the theoretical lens. The information provided on page three is an attempt to provide an alternative theoretical structure or an alternative way of understanding the situation as provided in the video-based case study. The theory provided on page three should be simply presented without extensive detail viewers should feel invited to think about the applicability of the alternative theoretical ideas presented here in the context of building a new understanding of the situation in the video-based case study. The intent of the information on this page is not to superimpose this way of thinking on the viewer, hence the information mentioned earlier. This, as well as with all information presented in a PBLO, should not be viewed as content to be memorized, but instead as instigation for thinking and discussion. And then finally, this is the second finally, we come to questions pages one and four, comparison of the two, and you see mock-ups of pages one and four on the screen uh, on the slide that's presented. The questions on pages one and four require the user initially to analyze the clips and then later to synthesize the information that has been given, um, that has been gathered by the users. The analysis synthesis structure is an attempt to employ Popperian principles of inductive and deductive reasoning along with hypothesis creation, defense, and refutation within a PBL context so that the video cases are not simply presentations of ideas to be absorbed. The questions embedded in the video case structure are designed to provoke discussion amongst the learners and the formulation of hypotheses that could be described as Popperian third world thought objects such as models and theories. More information regarding this reference to Popperian cosmology will be discussed in a video later clip, uh, video, later video clip. Coming then to the theoretical structure of this particular video clip, I'd like you to read the link paper. This article gives a brief overview of the relationship of many of the theoretical structures referenced in this and the next video clip. And that's a paper done by myself Venos Vane, Desjardins, and Bullock, 2010, and it's linked on the CCL Canada Council for Learning uh, website that's uh, given there. I will also give the URL in the WebCT environment. And then finally in this video clip, we come to the synthesis questions for this video clip, and they are as follows. Number one, why is the authenticity of the video-based case studies included in a PBLO of utmost importance? Number two, where would viewers of a PBLO find the problems that they are supposed to solve? Number three, why can the problems found in a PBLO be considered to be ill-defined? And why is this important? And finally, question number four, why are the analysis and synthesis questions important to the functioning of a PBLO?